On this episode, problems everywhere. We ask the most dangerous question. Why didn't I do screen check already? It's crazy that it took me so long. As we unleash powers which baby should not have been toyed with. <laughs> oh, yes! Yes, yes, yes. Welcome. I am Christian. This is LazyDiffs Academy. We are doing little shmup. You already seen this. You already seen this. You already know what it is and it's great. It's great because we are having... Look at this. I just, I just can't get enough of these beautiful spread shots. Oh, that looks so, so good. I think maybe the spread shot is a bit too slow. Um, now I'm, you know, you know, once you get, in, once you get the itch, like oh maybe this maybe that you know you just start tweaking and just can't stop tweaking um where was it uh where was it there we go fire um wait wait oh that's a normal fire right um where is the here right uh here where that's where the firing the spread that the guy is firing as it moves down i want it maybe to be a bit more frequent 25 uh, and i want maybe the bullets to be at, going at a speed of 1.3 let's just try 1.3 another thing i want to do with this guy is when this guy uh, guy is the yellow guy when this guy is um picked as the guy that is supposed to fire uh i want this guy not just to fire a single shot i want always i want this guy always fire spread shots so we're gonna go if um here this is the fun the function pick fire if um, my n dot type equals four that's the yellow guy then else so for all of the other guys we just do a single shot but for for the yellow guy Uh, he does a spread shot and again the same we're gonna use the same parameters for now yeah that's good yeah yeah that's good that's really annoying if that happens to you and you have to shoot uh, other enemies that's <laughs> So see you kind of have a priority again uh, with every enemy I want to like think about what is the priority why would people want to shoot this enemy down and not the other ones in this case this is going to be an enemy that has a lot of health and that is you know it's not fast or anything it's just moving very slowly but it's just saturating the screen with bullets so you want to get rid of him um in order to for like so when he starts going down like he really fills the screen bullets and you want to like avoid that you want to shoot him down so you have less bullets on the screen so we can take care of all of the other threats that are on the screen that's my idea now we're going to tweak this a little bit to make this happen as i said in this episode uh, i want to focus on the idea of um aimed shots something that we haven't done yet, something that we want to do. Uh, uh, I wanted to specifically, and we can maybe already do this right now. Um, uh, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna create a function called aimed fire. Uh, and it's gonna emanate from an enemy and it will go at a certain speed and that's it, right? And I'm gonna actually already implement this that uh, else if in here where uh, if we nominate a yellow guy it will uh, the yellow guy will fire spread and if we nominate a red guy the red guys will uh, fire aimed shots they will actually sh sh try to hit the player so we're gonna go aimed fire my n comma uh, at with a speed of two very very fast bullet or not very fast but a very fast bullet okay and now, but now aim fire does absolutely nothing. So we have to fill aim fire with, uh, with information. So um, the whole reason, or one of the reasons why we are using uh, this kind of different coordinate system with an angle and a speed instead of X and Y, or we converting the angle and speed to X and Y. The reason why we're doing this thing is first of all, because we could uh, use the create the spread shot very easily, but also so we can, calculate an angle between uh, the enemy and a target, right? 
In order to do that, we have to use actually advanced trigonometry. And this is where I, I'm giving up guys. I'm done. I am not going to go into like tan and arc tan and everything. There's so many other trigonometrical functions. And, and frankly, um, this is kind of like what I'm going to show you right now. It's just like, um, equation that I just written down somewhere. I always have like a card on, on the Lexel of a forum that I reference. I just always look it up and, and copy the code from that card because I just ne can never remember it. And I can't even tell you what this function is doing, but I can tell you the formula that we can use uh, with a certain trigonomical function to calculate the angle between two points. Bam, copy and paste. That's the, <laughs> that's the formula. So we're using this arctan2 function. This, it's a sequel to arctan1, I guess. I don't even... All right, so the arctan2 function, it's a trigonomical function. It takes two parameters. So it's gonna be distance between kind of like two objects in the y dimension, you know, kind of how far the way are, uh, they are in, in vertical dimension, and the distance of two objects in the x dimension, you know, how far they are on the screen, basically. So we are basically calculating those two distances and we're plugging into arc 10 and it's important that we do the y first and the x last um, because <laughs> and then we let arc 10 2 do its magic and it will magically spit out the angle between those two points. Perfect. So in this case, we just need to just plug in the different coordinates. In this case, uh, well, uh, object number one. And it's important which one is one and which one is two. Object number one is gonna be uh, my n dot x. Oh, actually, again, y is first, x is later. That's kind of like unusual. Usually you have the x is first, right? So uh, my n is gonna be object number one. And object number two is gonna be the ship. So ship, not shop, ship. Ah, I'm pressing buttons. And now we're called, a me fire, I am fire, ship Y. Ship Y and ship X. Like this. And this should return us an angle at which a bullet has been fired in order to hit us. Um, now we are going to then, once we have this angle, we're just gonna use the regular fire function to just fire the bullet. So we're gonna fire it at our enemy. We're gonna use this angle that we just calculated. And we're gonna use the speed that we indicated from uh, when we called the function. That's it, that's all that there is. Now, um, I wanna create, I wanna actually go to a level where we have a lot of red enemies. I think that's gonna be level number one. So, or, or number two. So let's go to the wave, let's set the wave to one. So we jump straight into two and we're gonna have, oops, there is some problem here. Uh, oh yeah, right. Hmm. Else if I, for, did I forget to write this? My n dot type equals two then. I forgot to finish this if statement where we are checking what kind of type an enemy is and then firing a different kind of shot. Okay. <laughs> Problems everywhere. Um, aimed fire. There's a problem with calling aimed fire. Did, yeah, I, I deleted the D and then, okay, whatever. I just changed the name of the function and I just didn't notice. Somebody was screaming on the screen. Like, no, watch out, Christian. I got you. See? Now the bullet is flying at us. So the red guy is always trying to, to, to hit us. I'm going to be maybe here in the side of the screen. And yeah, the bullets are flying at us. If we don't move, then the red guys will shoot us down. And this is generally, maybe I, uh, we have to, I, I, I forgot to do an introduction. This is generally like the two basic sh um, types of shots that you have in every shmup, just two types of shot. One is the aimed shot and the other one is the not aimed shot, the blind shot. Um, they are, they have, gameplay wise, they have two different purposes. They're radically different shots, actually, in terms of gameplay. The aimed shot is supposed to encourage players to keep moving. If uh, you have a game with a lot of aimed shots and you don't move, you stay on the screen without moving, you will get shot down. The aimed shot forces players to keep moving in order to stay alive. That's what the aimed shot does. 
the unaimed shot, the blind shot, that's the one that we st uh, started out with that just like shot downwards and nothing that the green guys are shooting. This limits the space that is safe. So if there's um, bullets coming down, right, and there's lots of bullets on the left side of the screen, even though, you know, they're not necessarily aimed at me, I cannot move there because the bullets will hit me, right? So it kind of like limits, uh, controls the space that is available to the player. And that's basically kind of like the the two different forces that that are exerted on the player. On the player, first a force that encourages players to move, but then another force that also kind of like doesn't allow players to move in, into certain places. And that creates the tension that is kind of so nice about shmups. You kind of want to have a mixture of both, not just the one without the other. Always a, a bit of a mixture. You want to make some areas unsafe, and then you want to encourage the player to move into those unsafe places in order to stay alive. Right, everything is good. I, I do have to say there is this shot is not quite precise. I mean, it's, it works for a tiny enemy like this, and it's, it will work for the yellow enemy as well, if we are used in aim fire with a yellow enemy. But it is not exactly the thing that... Because the problem is we are uh, the, the source of the angle that we're calculating. That is the position of the... Uh, of uh, the enemy and that is not the position from which the shot is flying out right you remember we kind of like we manipulating the starting position of the bullet slightly we had three and six for the normal enemies and seven and 13 for the yellow enemies we're changing where the position um, where the bullet is starting uh, based on uh, from where the where the enemy is currently at so this is not exactly the position of the of the bullet um, uh, this is not exactly the angle at which we want to fire the bullet in order to hit the player. Now, again, it's just a tiny little difference, so you can just leave it there and be like, okay, whatever, I don't care. But I am not that person. I am not. I I care about these things. Okay, so I I'm actually going gonna go the extra mile and make it sure that it's it is it is correct. Uh, the way we're gonna do this is actually a ni really nice trick. Something we can do uh, with the fire function is we can we're gonna return the bullet that we add. We're going to return the bullet. So if we call this function, we're going to get a bullet as a return. That bullet will get already added to my bullets um, array, so the e bullets array, so it will won't, and it, nothing will change. But as a bonus, we get the object so we can do something with the object while it's already still in the array. And this allows the aimed fire function to do its magic. So what we're going to do is we're going to fire a bullet. We're going to create a local uh, variable called my e -bull. We're going to fire a bullet at the angle of zero. We're going to just fire a bullet downwards at a given speed from this enemy, right? The bullet will get created in this function. Everything will be fine. It will get created. And then we're going to do the calculation, the angle calculation, and we're going to manually change uh, um, speed x and speed y of the bullet. Right. So here, when we do the angle calculation, we are no longer using the the ship as the source of the angle of the line that we're trying to uh, find out the angle of, but we are actually going to use the bullet, the position of the bullet, because then the bullet has been spawned. We know exactly where the bullet has been spawned. And then we can measure exactly, you know, the angle between the actual position of the bullet and our target, which is the ship. So that's going to be the real angle. And then we can take this bullet, we can change the speed x to the, the real angle and multiply it by speed and so forth. And again, we talked about this in the object episode. You don't have to write this bullet back into the array or anything. It's already in the array, but we also got a second reference for it. So we kind of manipulate the um, uh, its properties behind the scenes and then we can just leave it to go leave it there and it will be already changed in the array because it's already in the array okay so this is how we're gonna do the aim bullets i'm gonna try if this even works hopefully it works yeah now again we don't really see the difference here technically but that's fine and yeah if we really wanted to be like really pedantic about this and I might actually do this because the bullets are currently not aimed at the center of my sprite it's they are aimed we said that right the position is always the top left corner of the sprite so we're gonna get a slightly better result 
if we add four to the position of the ship. You're always like there's always something, right? I'm gonna use a parenthesis to make sure. Just because it should be fine, but I just wanna use a parenthesis. And again, like the distances are not so big, that makes not such a difference, but it's just like it just feels better to me. I feel better about it. Oh yeah, that, that, looked like, that looked like a dangerous, that looked like a killer bullet right there. In bullet, guys. Finished. Now this episode is still young, so I wanted to deal with something that I wanted to do. It's kind of crazy that I didn't done it. It's, it's like this kind of basic technique that uh, a lot of indie de developers are known for. Like kind of, it's kind of like a, a juiciness technique that adds more juiciness, adds this kind of like, you know, arcade feeling. And that is screen shake. Why didn't I do screen shake already? It's crazy that it took me so long. It's episode 25 and I'm doing screen shake now. It should have been like the first thing I did. Now the function that we're going to use today is actually, I'm, I'm actually did some research into this a little bit. There is a famous independent developer called, I have it written down here, Jan Willem Niemann. Jan Willem Niemann or Nijman? Uh, probably not Nijman. I'm not sure. It is one of the two guys of Vlambert. If you remember Vlambert, the guys who made uh, Ridiculous Fishing and Nuclear Throne and these kinds of like games like this. It was always Rami and, and Jan. And those two guys are kind of like, you know, were kind of like indie superstars at the time. They are well known for kind of like pushing forth this idea, especially Jan here, for pushing forth this idea of juiciness, of making the games feel alive and moving and lively and, and, and being like awesome, just like adding a lot of animation and, and um, excitement to the games. And yeah, screen shake is uh, like a basic function, to, like a very simple basic function to do this. You just like shake the screen a little bit when something exciting happens, right? Uh, actually, there's a really, really good talk by, uh, by Jan called The Art of Screen Shake. Look this up on YouTube, watch it. It's amazing. Absolutely. So anyway, one day in 2019, Jan on Twitter had an exchange on Twitter with somebody and he just shared some code with everybody uh, on how he, he, he himself, the ambassador of screen shake, so to speak, how he makes screen shake. It's nothing special. He just, and he admits like, oh, it's just like a normal screen shake thing. But he does some things in, in an interesting fashion that I didn't do before myself. So I learned a lot from that thing and I want to use it today. We're going to step through his way of making screen shake. Now, there is a function at the core of screen shake that I wanted to introduce that we haven't really talked about. And that function is called ca ca camera. Camera. Camera takes two values. Let's just run camera without anything. Everything is good. Everything is peachy. Now I'm gonna run camera 1010. What, what, what? Ooh. Oh! What? I'm gonna run camera with 64. 64. Oh, what? Our game is disappearing. Where, where, where did our game go? Why is our game in the corner? What about minus 64, minus 64? What? What? <laughs> oh, that's actually fun. You can see the enemies flying in. So let's go uh, a zero, uh, 88, something like this. Oh, you can see the enemies waiting off screen and flying in. <laughs> um, so what the camera function does, it, it basically changes the coordinate system. So zero, zero, like the coordinate zero, zero, and the pixel coordinate zero, zero, are no longer in the top left corner. They we move those coordinates somewhere else on the screen. And where we move it on the screen is we specify in those two, uh, two numbers. Everything else that you draw on the screen afterwards will use this new coordinate system. Everything that was in the screen before that will just stay on the screen. And you can tell like, okay, I'm going to do something extreme 64, 64, right? Or like, yeah, this will do 0, 88. This is the, the, the thing that we just did, right? Where it's like, you see the, the you know, oh, I actually want to have minus 88, right? Yeah, minus 88. Yeah, it, it works in reverse, but you know, you get that gist. 
So yeah, it looked crazy, right? But that's because I do it before we draw everything. If I do this afterwards, well, it still works, but because the thing is we're not resetting them, we just move the coordinates and we never change them, so they never revert to normal. Um, but if at the beginning of the draw function we set them to normal, we just call camera without any any arguments, then you will see nothing will, ch will change. Uh, the camera function won't change, won't move around things that are already on the screen. It will only move around things or change the position of the things that will be drawn afterwards. Okay, that's kind of like very important uh, con um, aspect to consider. So whatever, we can use the camera function to screen check, but we just have to do it before we draw everything. Right, let us go, let's just go in a tool function. I know this is, the, the, the tool tab is a bit a bit big, but I'm gonna create create a screen check function, uh, a screen check function in our, our tool tab. We're gonna call this function do shake, just do shake. No parameters, just, 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 just a little shaky rule. And what we're gonna do here is, again, as I said, we have to do everything that we do. There's a space invader. Uh, everything that we do, we're gonna do before we draw. So we're gonna do uh, in the in the you know primordial draw function. Nothing like we, it's gonna apply to every mode. In the primordial draw function, we're just gonna do gonna execute the do shake. So we're gonna do the shaking before we draw everything else. Okay. Now the shake function will rely on a global variable, on the variable that we're gonna define at the very beginning, and this variable will be called shake. We're going to define shake in the init function. We're going to set shake to zero. And we're going to use shake to move the camera. And first, let's make make it uh, in a way that, that doesn't work. So we're going to go camera, shake, shake. That seems like an obvious choice. Well, okay, if we run this, obviously nothing will happen because it's just camera zero, zero, that doesn't change anything. If we sh uh, change shake to 20, well, now everything is offset, but there's no shaking. What, where's the shaking? You've been, I've been promised shaking, there's no shaking. I've, I've been betrayed, everybody betrayed me. <laughs> I'm fed up with this world. Uh, actually, uh, for the rest of this, this video, I'm gonna actually print shake on the screen just 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 so we know what's happening oh we're not resetting the camera hmm. all right because we're clearing the screen mm, yeah 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 yeah. okay okay we got it so let us just do a camera print shake at the end got it got it okay good something like this there we go and so now when we set and we when we do shake 32 you can see the entire the entire scene has shifted but we see the shake in the corner there right and we start we still see the shake uh, in the corner okay so far so good so far so good but again this is not shaking this is just shifting the camera in order to shake we're going to actually do a random we're going to do a random thing we're going to uh, create a local variable i'm going to call this shake x uh, and we're gonna basically say RD shake. And the same thing with shake y, RD shake. And then we're gonna plug those two variables into the camera function, and that's gonna be it. Job's done. All right, job is not necessarily done. Uh, okay, we have the shaking, but the shaking is quite violent and it doesn't mm, it doesn't get down. So we have to kind of animate the shaking so it gets it gets strong shaking, but then it goes down. So uh, we have the 32 number, and that number just has to decrease over time. And an easy way of doing this is gonna we're gonna say like um, we're just gonna go shake uh, minus equals one. Just gonna decrease shake by one. And we're gonna go if shake is smaller than one, then shake equals zero. 
something like this. So the shake wheel gets reduced. The only problem with this is now um, that if shake has really, really, so you can kind of feel like, okay, now now it's shaking and re being reduced, that's fine. The only problem is that if shake gets to really, really high numbers, if, the, if, if, the, if we put a really, really high number in the screen shake, it takes a while, it takes a while for it to get down to zero. So it's good to say like, okay, if shake is really, really big, something like this, if shake is greater than 10, then we're not just going to reduce it by one. That means that the number is really, really big and we want to maybe something, do something like shake equals shake um, multiplied by 0 0.9. And we can also use, again, this multiply equals, multiply equals 0 0.9. So we have this big, big variable that is going to 10 or bigger, right? And then we want to reduce it as quickly as possible. Else, I'm going to uh, subtract and reduce it to zero. That's it. So you can see now, even if you have like a big number, the number quickly gets reduced to zero. That's the, the whole idea of this. Like whatever number we start shake with, we want to reduce it to zero uh, fairly quickly because we don't want this screen to continue shaking. So now that we have this set up, now that we have this set up, uh, we can use this in beautiful, beautiful ways. Every time we want the screen to shake, we just set the shake variable to some number. And that's it. Everything else will be taken care of. Let's try that right away with explosions. So I'm going to go into the tab number one and I'm going to find the explosion. There we go. Explode. Every time we explode, we're going to set shake to 32. Let's, let's try that. Let's try that. Let's see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> okay, that was a bit extreme. Let's, let's let's set it to a six. Let's just make it a more subtle, subtle explosion. Okay, okay. So you can see how the explosion is suddenly getting like a lot more oomph. This this is like a this is like a serious, 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 serious function. This is a, a, this is this this gets like this gets you a lot of adrenaline. I have to say. Um, now we get, and the, the, the thing is, like, it, it is pretty intense, right? So this is uh, shake two, and even this little jerking, like, this is this, you know, this gets you pumping. And this is the point where I will say, the reason why I haven't done screen shake until this episode is that for shmups, especially screen shake, might be a bit too much. That's something that I see quite a lot, uh, where you have shmups and they just overdo it a little bit with the screen shake. And the problem with the shmups is that you kind of don't want to have the screen shake. If you look at this, let's put it up to eight again. We are here in this level. We are trying to avoid the bullets that are flying to us. And once the screen starts shaking, it's so easy visually. It's so easy to lose um, track visually of the bullets, right? It's so easy not to be able to see what you're, what is actually happening anymore because the entire screen is shaking. It's it's your focus on the bullets that you're trying to avoid. But alas, it's just like I don't even know. You just your eyes defocus suddenly because the screen is shaking. You're like, oh, it's gonna. It has like this effect on you. So that's why I would thoroughly discourage you from using screen shake during gameplay when just regular things are happening. If things are exploding, I know it looks more awesome if the screen is shaking, but don't. There is actually a shmup that just recently came out on a Switch, at least I saw it, uh, called like Binary Star Infinity, kind of like a black and white with uh, touches of red, very retro looking shmup. Looked awesome. I think it made by the French team, I'm not exactly sure. but. Every explosion has screen shake. It's so difficult to play. It's really distracting. A lot of reviewers said that. I hope they will eventually bring out an update so you can turn it off in the options menu because it's just really not really playable when it shakes constantly. Oh, look, you can actually turn it off now. Good job. Um, so what can we use the screen shake for? We can still use the screen shake for certain uh, situations. I think a good application of the screen shake in our case is when we die when we get hit. I think this is a fantastic application of the screen shake. Let's do that. So let's go in the update function and let us find uh, the game over. Test. There we go. 
when we when lives are oh well that's game over right we just want to have like uh when we when we get hit right we're gonna set shake to eight when we get hit by a bullet and we're gonna set shake to eight when we get hit by uh by the enemy let's try that i'm gonna fly against an enemy Maybe now that I mean now we can like really afford. Uh, first of all, I want to have more lives. I don't want to restart the game every time this happens. Uh, where are lives? Give me more lives. Come on, come on. Where's where? Seriously, where's lives? Oh, there we go. <laughs> I got a foot. Okay, so four lives, and then uh, update function. Let's just do sixteen. Let's just uh, make a real, real big, big screen shake. Yeah, that seems good. Like this, this is okay to get shaken up by this because I mean we got hit. Like there's nothing as as severe as getting hit. I'm gonna set it to twelve maybe. Yeah, that seems that seems reasonable. That seems like a reasonable shake, screen shake. Uh, we might have other opportunities later on to add some screen shake. I think it's good. Like for you know, if maybe a boss explodes. Let's see about that. Hey guys. Uh, I just like finished recording. I was going a little bit over the code, just like thinking about things. And, uh, and so I'm a bit from the future, just slightly from the future. I just realized I made a small mistake here. I just wanted to fix this real quick. It's, it's not a big deal. It's, it's not, won't change things dramatically, but they it will change things a little bit. And I wanted to address this. So here, when we're randomizing the screen shake, uh, what we want to actually do is we want to uh, subtract uh, shake um, divided by two. And the same thing here. Uh, the reason why we want to do this is we, because we want shaking to happen in both directions, negative and positive, and same vertically as well. Um, so in order to do that, we have to subtract the half of the shake. It's it's kind of like the same problem that we had previously with um, when we were doing the uh, sparks and they were supposed to fly in all directions, not just in positive direction, right? It's kind of like the same problem here. Um, so this will make the shake look a bit nicer. So let's see how that looks when we start with, with, a, with a real big shake here at the beginning. Right, so now the shake is really, really shaking and not just like going in one direction. Let's, just, let's, let's compare this to the old version of this. This is the old version. See when you run here, I'm gonna run this multiple times. You kind of see like the, the screen has a tendency to kind of, kind of go to the upper left corner, right? And then it returns kind of like uh, back to where it was because that's because we didn't do the minus here. When we add the minus, the screen will have a tendency to just stay in, a, in the center where it was and shake in the center. That's kind of like important part. Uh, Christian from the past, from a couple of minutes ago, he didn't realize this. Do it like this. All right, so that's it. We got, I think, an episode that is kind of almost a reasonable length. <laughs> uh, we got the aimed bullets. We got some screen shake done. I'm happy as a clam. Let's move over to the doggy zone. Mm -hmm. All right, so in today in the doggy zone, we have a bit of an unusual challenge. So I talked about Jan William, uh, the guy who made the screen shake stuff, the, who posted the screen shake stuff on Twitter. I talked about this video, the art of screen shake. I want you in the doggy zone, this is the task for next time, I want you to watch this video. And I want you to look for maybe some kind of cool effects or lessons that he talks about that you might want to maybe try out in our little schmuck program. I want you to reach out to other people to take information also from other sources and try to incorporate them in your own creations. I'm not gonna be always there, as a source of information for you. And also, maybe I'm just plain wrong about certain things. Watch Jan talk about games, how to make uh, games awesome and learn from him. There is gonna be another video that we'll also suggest, which is called Juice It or Lose It by Petri Puro and uh, Martin Johansen. This is the guy who made uh, uh, Downhole, Hold Down, Hold Down. 
<laughs> both excellent independent developers and that talk is also really really good i saw it in person one time it was really exciting so yeah both of these talks these presentations are really good you should watch them they sh they are almost essential watching for every independent developer to kind of like understand what juiciness is learn from them try to apply them somehow on our schmuck Additionally, we are now getting into a serious area. I already talked about this. We already had this in a previous area, a previous um, doggy zone, but if you haven't done so, I thoroughly recommend to create now that everything is kind of like starting to behave, like there's different beha any behaviors and different shot patterns and everything. I want us to go once more over the levels and create meaningful levels. At least six, I think would be good to have levels that slowly ramp up in the difficulty and that presents different challenges. I want you to use those new behaviors of our enemies and maybe the enemies that you created yourself uh, to generate interesting levels that we can go through. I definitely will do this at the beginning of the next episode. So uh, yeah, you want to maybe get ahead of me there. Yes, and that is it. This is the end of this episode when we are going to move on to this part, you know, as on the end of every episode where I'm going to give a big shout out and a huge thank you to all the people who made this show possible. That's right, this video series has been made possible through the generous support of my viewers on Coffee. Thank you so much. And if you aren't a supporter yet, check out coffee.com slash lazydevs. Right, right, right. Okay, good. So mm, we're getting to some good stuff. I think it's time to start doing like serious testing of the game. Uh, next episode, I'm gonna try to uh, create some levels. And then there's one more important thing that I wanna do. And that is going to be, uh, I want to have pickups. I want to talk about pickups and maybe even some kind of bombing system. I have a good idea. And yeah, you will have to tune in next time to find out what that idea is. See you next time around, guys. Bye-bye.